So as we start our unit on persuasive writing, the first thing that we're going to be talking about is different methods of persuasion that we can use to strengthen our arguments. And these are going to be really helpful when we are actually applying them to our writing, and they're going to help us become better persuaders overall. So by the end of this video, you should be able to do a couple of things. The first thing is you are going to be able to know and understand all of the definitions of the three different persuasive techniques that we are going to talk about today. The second thing is you are going to be able to identify these different persuasive techniques in an advertisement or a piece of writing. And the third thing that you should be able to do by the end of this is apply these techniques to your own writing. So as I mentioned previously, we are going to be talking about different persuasive techniques that we can use. There are three different techniques that we're going to be focusing on today. The first one is called ethos, then we'll move into something called pathos, and then our last one will be logos. So the first technique that we're going to talk about today is ethos. Ethos comes from the word ethics. And this idea of ethics refers to appealing to someone's sense of right and wrong. So just to kind of break it down, people are more likely to be persuaded by a person that they can trust or a person that they feel is morally sound. You are more likely to be persuaded by someone that you can relate to as being an upstanding individual. Ethos also talks about the trustworthiness of a speaker or a writer, going back to this idea that people are more likely to be persuaded by individuals that they can trust. People are likely to trust a writer or a speaker that appears to be an authority figure on a particular topic or someone that appears to be qualified or very knowledgeable about a specific topic. So as we are working on persuasive writing, this means that you as persuasive writers need to be knowledgeable about the topics that you are writing about because it's your goal to persuade people to buy into these ideas that you are talking about. So you want your audience to trust you and trust in what you're saying. You want to appear to be a credible and reliable writer and that your information is valid and that you are almost like an expert in what you are writing about. All right, so we're going to talk about how ethos can be used as a method of persuasion. The use of ethos can be seen in advertisements anywhere. A lot of large companies will use ethos as a way to persuade consumers to buy their product. For example, these large companies will often hire a notable figure, like a celebrity athlete or a doctor, to endorse their product. By having these people endorse their products, many times people will begin to put their trust into these people. They might think, hey, if Taylor Swift is wearing CoverGirl, I should too. They might think that since Taylor Swift is a woman who wears a lot of makeup that she is probably a trustworthy person to listen to when it comes to choosing the right makeup. So since they might feel that way about her, they might be more likely to buy a CoverGirl product. Same thing goes with the other picture that I have on the slide with Usain Bolt and wearing Puma shoes. He is a famous well-known runner. He has probably worn hundreds if not thousands of pairs of running shoes throughout his career. And if he is endorsing Puma and saying that they are a high quality shoe, people might trust him and trust in that and be more likely to buy a Puma shoe as a result. The second way that ethos can be used is by having the writer or speaker demonstrate knowledge of the topic or subject. If you are trying to persuade someone, for example, that Diet Coke is unhealthy, then you should have detailed information about Diet Coke so that you can come across as being knowledgeable and show people that you know what you're talking about. You don't ever want to get caught in a situation where you are unable to continue writing a persuasive essay because you've run out of things to say or you've run out of information or you are in a debate and you're stuck in the middle of the debate because you don't know any more about your topic. It's important that you know a lot of information about your topic. You want people to trust you. And once they trust in you as being a knowledgeable source of information, you are more likely to win your argument and persuade people overall. So our second of our third persuasive technique is pathos. Pathos is an appeal to people's emotions. So what happens when we use pathos is we are trying to get people to feel a certain way. So we might try to get people to feel either happy or sad or angry so that it can help your argument. And on the next slide, we're going to take a look at some examples of how we can use pathos 
to help make things more persuasive. So I feel like the best way to explain pathos is through examples. So this idea of pathos, again, goes back to this idea of appealing to people's emotions. When you are using pathos, you are trying to make people feel a certain way. Maybe you want them to get excited about your product, or you want them to feel really happy about what they are seeing in an advertisement, or maybe you want them to feel sad because if they feel sad, they might be more likely to buy into your cause. So we have seen pathos so many different places in advertisements. If you have ever seen those really sad animal commercials where they're asking you to donate to an animal shelter, or if you see those commercials of starving children, uh, either in like India or Africa, and they're asking you for donations, and they'll be like, oh, with just 25 cents a day, you can feed a child for an entire year. Those are are examples of advertisements that are appealing to people's sense of emotions. They want you to feel sad so that you're more likely to donate to their cause. They're trying to persuade you to do something by playing with your emotions. So here at the bottom, I have some examples of advertisements that use pathos. So the first one, it kind of goes back to the idea of those sad animal commercials. We have an advertisement from the Humane Society that says, in a violent family, anyone could be a victim. And we have that picture of the sad dog there at the bottom. There's kind of showing that, hey, you know, maybe you should really go and pick up a shelter dog um, because there is a there that really needs a home. And it's playing, that on, playing on with your emotions, trying to make you feel a certain way so that you will be more inclined to go to support the Humane Society or go and adopt a shelter animal. Um, they want you to feel, you know, kind of like, oh, like your heart is breaking uh, so that you'd be more willing to buy into their cause. The other example here, we have an Under Armour advertisement and it says, what's beautiful looking up to yourself. They want people or maybe women to feel inspired by looking at that advertisement or they want women to feel empowered playing with that their emotions when they see this like, oh, I should wear Under Armour because Under Armour is a brand that is going to make me feel empowered. They're going to make me feel good about myself. So again, this idea of pathos goes back to appealing to people's emotions and trying to persuade them by making them feel a certain way. So our last persuasive technique is logos. And logos appeals to someone's sense of logic. So what this means is that people are going to be looking for a logical argument. They want to see things like facts, numbers, data in order to support one's claim. So kind of going back to that example of arguing that Diet Coke might be unhealthy, you might have facts or numbers or data to back up that Diet Coke is unhealthy. So anytime again that we're talking about logos, we're talking about appealing to someone's sense of logic and using facts, numbers, and data to support a claim. All right, so we're just going to go through a really quick example of logos. So let's say I am a dietitian and I'm trying to encourage my patients to eat a healthy diet. It's one thing to say, hey, you know, you shouldn't eat a Snickers bar because it's unhealthy. And then it's another thing to say, you shouldn't eat a Snickers bar because it has 280 calories and 30 grams of sugar. And 30 grams of sugar is a lot of sugar to consume in one intake. A patient might listen to me more if I have presented them with actual facts and statistics versus just saying that Snickers bar is unhealthy. So adding those facts and numbers and statistics into our arguments really helps persuade people to buy into what we are trying to say. All right, so just so that I know that you have got everything down, you are going to be watching a short YouTube video. The link to this video is posted on Canvas. Um, you are going to watch the video, it is a commercial, and then you are going to be answering this one question that I have posted for you here at the bottom of this slide. So after you have watched the commercial uh, on YouTube, you're gonna answer the question, which persuasive techniques were used in the video and how do you know? And you are going to be answering this question in our Canvas discussion. So once you are done watching, you will type response in the discussion on Canvas. Please make sure that you click on the correct class period uh, before you actually type in your discussion and save it.